Welcome to the Principles for Smart Living show, where we talk about five things virtually important to smart living, which we call the life mastery matrix. Now, those five things are faith, growth, excellence, contribution, and self-care. Faith constitutes your spiritual journey and your relationship with God. Growth is your attitude to keep learning and becoming a better person. Excellence is your approach to doing quality work in everything you put out in the world. Contribution is about the sharing of your gifts and your talents to be a blessing to others and to unlock more of your God-given capacity and capabilities. And self-care is you taking care of your body, your mind, and your spirit, and also getting enough quiet rest to refresh and renew yourself regularly. Hi, I'm your host, Conrad L. Jones, author and founder of PurposeUnleashed.com. So let's get started. Well, it's a beautiful day in the city of Freeport, Bahamas. I hope it's a beautiful day wherever you live. You know, what makes any day beautiful is not the weather, but rather your attitude of optimism and hope towards your everyday life. And yes, it is a good day to be alive. If this is your first time joining me on the show, I want to say welcome and thanks for sharing your time with me. If you're connecting with us on Facebook or YouTube, don't forget to like our page or subscribe to our channel so you get notified of each new episode. I want to... So I love a good story, whether it's written in a book or on the screen as a movie. But let me ask you a simple question. Did you realize that you were given two special drops of oil in your life's teaspoon and that managing them wisely will lead you to better happiness? Now, if you didn't, that's great. Then let me explain with, yep, you guessed it. What else but a story? Paul Coelho, the renowned Brazilian lyricist and best-selling author, tells this short, short story in one of his writings, which goes as such. A merchant sent his son to learn the secrets of happiness from the wisest of men. The young man, whom we will call Jonathan just for the sake of this exercise and for my telling of the story, Jonathan wandered through the desert for 40 days until he reached a beautiful castle at the top of the mountain. And there lived the wise man that the young man was looking for. However, instead of finding a wise man sitting alone, meditating on a cliffside, Jonathan actually entered a room and he saw a great deal of activity. Merchants were coming and going and people were chatting in the corners. A small orchestra was playing sweet melodies and there was a table laden with the most delectable dishes from that part of the world. The wise man talked to everybody and the young man Jonathan had to wait for two hours until it was his time for his audience. With considerable patience, the wise man listened attentively to the reason for the young boy's visit. But he told him that at that very moment, he didn't have the time to explain to him the secret of happiness. He suggested that Jonathan take a stroll around his palace and come back in two hours' time. However, he said, I want to ask you a favor. He handed the young man a teaspoon into which he poured two drops of oil. He said, while you walk, carry the spoon and don't spill the oil. So Jonathan began to climb up and down the palace staircases, always keeping his eyes fixed on the spoon. At the end of the two hours, he returned to the presence of the wise man. So asked the wise man, did you see the Persian tapestries hanging in my dining room? Or did you see the garden that the master of gardeners took 10 years to create? Did you notice the beautiful parchments in my library? Embarrassed, Jonathan confessed that he had seen nothing. His only concern was not to spill the drops of oil that the wise man had entrusted him. So the wise man looked at him, smiled, he said, so go back and see the wonders of my world because you can't trust the man if you don't know his house. Now more at ease, Jonathan took the spoon and he strolled again through the palace. This time, he paid attention to all of the works of art that hung from the ceiling and the walls. He saw the gardens and the mountains all around the palace, the delicacy of the flowers, the taste with which each work of art was placed right in its niche. Returning to the wise man, excited, he reported in detail all that he had seen. The wise man looked at him and he said, 
but where are the two drops of oil that I entrusted you? Looking down at the spoon, Jonathan realized he had spilled the oil. Well, said the wise man, the only advice I have to give you is this. The secret of happiness lies in looking at all of the wonders of the world and never forgetting the two drops of oil in your spoon. This is by far one of my most favorite stories simply because I see so much meaning and useful content within it for everyday life so that I'm clear about where I'm going and that I focus on what is really important and I manage my two drops. So let me put this story within context for you so you can see how to extract clarity and meaning from your own stories. Are you ready? Good. Let's go. You know, just like the young man, Jonathan, in the story, we too are given two drops of oil, which are poured into our life's teaspoon. And we are also given the responsibility to manage them wisely as we enjoy the wonder and the splendor of the world God has created around us in everyday life. In thinking about wisely managing our lives and to add a little more wisdom to our discussion, I want to reference one of the greatest writers in Christendom the Apostle Paul. Paul wrote a sensible piece of practical advice to the people at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 5 and 15 to 17. And I'm in the amplified version of the Bible. And here's what he said. He said, look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as unwise and witless, but as wise, sensible, intelligent people making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. You know, Paul just helped me sum up those two drops in our life's teaspoon. The first drop represents time, which we all have a limited supply of. And the second drop, represents opportunity, which may exist in abundance all around us, but we must always wisely choose which ones to explore because time will never permit us to explore every available opportunity. So let's journey together as we explore a little more of time and opportunity because I want you to lead this session with a bigger, more useful perspective of what you have available in your life and how to best manage it. So the first drop of oil we are given in our teaspoon of life is called time. From the very moment we are born until the moment we breathe our last breath, we have been moving through our lives according to time. Time is the universal pattern within all of our lives, which continues to advance us by the seconds, the hours, the days, and the years closer towards eternity. Time can be seen as God's chauffeur-driven limo, which picks us up from the moment we're born with one goal of driving us daily towards our final face-to-face -face appointment with the creator himself. Time is something that we are given in limited supply, which we can't borrow more of from friends. We can't beg more of from people passing by. We can't steal some from anyone. We can only use what we have been allotted. And contrary to today's popular ideas by management experts and gurus, time is something that you honestly, you don't have the power to manage or control. You can only manage you and what you do at any given moment because time doesn't wait, time doesn't stop, time doesn't negotiate, and time only moves in one direction, which is toward eternity. The Apostle Paul said that we are to make the most of our time. This means that every day we use our time to become more of who God has called us to be, one step at a time. And becoming who God has called us to be will always require two important things. The first thing it will require is patience with and submission to God's development process within our life. You see, I know that it is often easy sometimes to become frustrated with the path and the process that God uses to transform us into the best version of ourselves. And I understand that sometimes it feels like we're not moving in our lives, like we don't have a clue as to where we're going or what God seems to be doing with us. 
but our patience with and our submission to God's development process, which is different for each of us, is important to making the most of our time. The next important thing is faith to believe that God's hand is leading us towards the fulfillment of our destiny. You know, right now, I'm resisting the urge to tell you another story about this because I've got one in my head, but I really don't want to make this session too long. So I'll just say that faith to believe simply comes down to trusting that God knows what he's doing and that within every mess and mistake on your path lies a miracle designed to push you towards your place of destiny in this world. So here is a wisdom nugget on this that you should write down. A wise person allots time to advance them to the right season where they can seize opportunities which become available to him or her to produce the greatest good that they can from their lives. So here's what this means. There are four natural seasons, right? You have summer, winter, harvest, and spring. And each natural season brings opportunities which are only available in those seasons. So here's a simple natural example of this. You can water ski in the summer and you can snow ski in the winter. You can plant in the spring and you can reap in the harvest, right? Now, imagine that it's 98 degrees outside in some place like Hawaii. Everyone is outside surfing, sunbathing, swimming in the ocean. And our friend Tom here is frustrated because he's trying to get his snow skis to work going down this beautiful mountainside. Well, what's the problem? The problem is that Tom is working against the available opportunities that exist in the season of summer, and he's trying to make something work that is not compatible with the season that he is currently in. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment, because many people are discouraged and frustrated with their lives simply because they are trying to make something work that is not compatible with the current season of life that they're in. And the sad reality is that this causes them to look at themselves as failures when all they need to do is take advantage of the season of life that they're in. And this leads us to knowing how to seize available opportunities, which is the second drop in your life's teaspoon. What does it mean to seize an opportunity? To seize an opportunity means to take advantage of an appropriate or favorable time or condition which arises in your life that will allow you to attain a goal or advance towards success. Now, this opportunity may not have existed before and it may not exist again. And therefore, you have to suddenly or forcefully grasp hold of it or use those favorable conditions to your advantage. Robert Kiyosaki, author of the best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, summed it up in the following words. You must train your mind to see what your eyes cannot. Here is the point. Opportunities are seen and seized only by people of vision and action. You see, most people silently struggle to understand and grasp what God's will and plan is for their lives. But I firmly believe that while we lead different lives and fulfill our destiny in different ways, God has already revealed his will and his plan to us in such a simple way that everyone can draw wisdom and strength from its meaning. In Genesis chapter 3 and 28, God gave mankind a command that still rings true today, which said, and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. You know, I firmly believe that God's will for each of us is that we wisely use the resources of our time, talents, and opportunities to positively impact our generation and to leave an uncommon example for the future generations to follow and that they can be better than we were. You see, I found that once we accept this simple mission in life, we will find ourselves constantly asking three simple questions every day. The first two questions are to help us to continually push the boundaries on our lives to keep growing, to keep moving forward, to keep reaching to the next level. Yet, it is the third question which matters most in life. Here are those three questions. Question one, 
Can I become more today than I was yesterday? This question speaks to your capacity to improve yourself and to strengthen your character step by step. Question two, can I do more today than I did yesterday? This question speaks to your ability to push beyond all limitations to accomplish whatever you have in your heart to do. And question number three, will God be pleased with what I have done with my life? Now, this question matters above all else because it speaks about you recognizing that the only real approval you need for living a life that matters comes from the only true source of life who is qualified to tell you, well done. And that source is Almighty God himself. So let me ask you one final question. How do you honestly plan to manage those two drops of oil in your life moving forward from today? Do you have a plan for it? Do you have a simple but effective system that can walk you step by step towards becoming the best version of yourself that God created you to be while wisely using your resources of time, talents, and opportunities to positively impact your generation and leave an uncommon example for future generations to follow and be better than you were? If you have a plan for managing those two drops in your life, that's great and I'm proud of you. If you don't and you haven't quite figured out how to do that yet, that's okay. But this also makes me excited for both you and for me because it presents another opportunity for us to continue our journey together. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I have. If you're on Facebook, don't forget to like our page. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel so that you get notified as soon as I release more fresh content. Also, you can find more resources over at our website, purposeunleashed.com. This is Conrad L. Jones saying, live your life purposefully, passionately, and uniquely great, and have a wonderful day, and see you in the next episode.